Lakers broke the seal with the first trade of the season, and I'm sure it's made a lot of their fans pay attention, wondering if this is going to shore up some of their pressing needs. I went through Rui Hachimura's game, pulling it apart in detail, to find out how it could fit into what the Lakers are doing and if it makes them a better team. With Anthony Davis' imminent return, it gives the Lakers a lot of front court options, and I, for one, am very intrigued about a huge front court of Rui, AD, and LeBron. None of them stretches the floor well at all, and while you might think Rui and AD's games are similar, Hachimura adds one aspect that neither the Lakers stars have the shot fake into one dribble pull-up. LeBron has modernized his game, so he's going to iso out top into a step-back three-point shot or bully his way all the way to the rim for a restricted area shot. Anthony Davis does pull up from the mid-range from time to time, but it's usually after he's thought about it for a second. Rui, on the other hand, has a classic spot-up game, one we almost never see anymore, where he shot fakes into a one dribble pull-up from the dreaded mid-range. He's pretty good at it, shooting 50% on pull-up middies this year, so it's not like he should abandon it, but it's still striking to see him pull these out of his bag. Rui shouldn't feel completely uncomfortable seeing as though his former teammate Russell Westbrook is on this Lakers team, and it's a real question as to whether Rui starts or comes off the bench. But I suspect he'll get plenty of minutes alongside his reunited teammate. And they hooked up quite a lot in the pick and roll back then, primarily setting an outside ball screen that let Rui pop to the free throw line area for open jumpers. This type of action might look pretty familiar to Lakers fans since it's the exact same thing they run with Russ now. There's a step up screen, he'll get heading towards the basket area until the defense cuts him off, and then an easy pass back to the middle for the open jumper. Expect to see plenty of this action with Rui and Russ. One thing that Rui has a lot of experience with is standing in the corner waiting for the pass to come for a shot, and it fits perfectly with the Lakers' mode of attack in the half court. As the LeBron heliocentric offense means perimeter guys are going to spot up and wait as patiently as they can until that pass comes. The Lakers rank 29th in passes per game, 20th in distance traveled on offense, 21st in average speed the players move on the court, and isolate fourth most among all NBA teams. When they're not pushing the ball on the break, their half-court offense moves in a very deliberate, and I mean slow, pace. And it's not hard to find possession after possession where Rui's role in his offense was to stand there for several seconds at a time until his teammates can create an opening where he can get the catch out of the corner. He should be fully accustomed to not cutting across the court much and then finding space in the corner as LeBron and Russ put the pressure on the defense. He's not great at catching two threes, unfortunately, and a part of it is that his release is slow, so an open shot on the catch ends up being a contested shot on the release. He also abbreviates his dip, and it leads to inconsistent arc on the shot. From what I've seen, the lower the arc, the better for him. And it wouldn't be hard to envision LeBron James breaking down defenses over and over and finding Rui in the corner for open shot after open shot a common occurrence this season, as we can always rely on LeBron to make the right decision on his drives, avoiding the congestion at the lane in order to find the better, more open corner threes. If you look at all the assists for corner threes that LeBron has thrown, exactly three of them have been to big men, so this should help space the Lakers' offense in a profoundly different way. I do think adding Rui will help this Lakers squad, but I'm going to need to see these guys play together in person before I make a final decision. And the best way to do that is to download SeatGeek, the best app to find tickets to any sporting event, concert, or the theater. With just a few taps, SeatGeek will scour the internet for the best deals out there, giving them a grade so you know what kind of value you're getting. They're rated number one on Trustpilot amongst all major ticketers, so you can feel secure that your tickets are legit. Best of all, you can save 20 bucks off your first purchase by using my code BBALL. So head over to SeatGeek now and you can enjoy all your favorite NBA teams live and in person. So you can see that Rui is the only big man other than LeBron and AD who can put the ball on the ground and attack a closeout. Rui has some ability to do this, but he's not great at that against good athletes around the rim. It's possible that with a fully healthy squad around him, there's enough gravity from his teammates to open up space for him to finish these. But then, the Lakers simply don't take a lot of three-point shots, and when they do, they miss a ton of them. So teams are going to pack the paint. Don't expect much room for Rui down there to be able to get these shots off cleanly. Rui can handle the ball well for his size, but he can't really get by anybody when driving. 
that's not necessarily a bad thing, since he's got this really good mid-range game and a big body to help create space and get into his pull-up jumper bag. He won't generate a lot of free throws, but he can leave that to LeBron and AD, and he can provide a decent outlet as a mid-range shot creator when defenses overload on the big guns. There won't be a lot of post-ups to go around on this team, and Rui tended to get most of his after a switch where he could attack a mismatch. He's never been great down there, but he's at his best if he can get to his turnaround jump shot over the smaller defender. The Lakers' offense over the past 20 games has been great, ranking 6th during that time, and I anticipate Rui helping this with his skill set since he's a graceful big man who plays under control and will most likely play better with guys like LeBron and AD around him. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and a quick request. I'm getting close to a million subscribers, love to get there a little bit quicker, so if you can hit that subscribe button, that'd be awesome, and stay tuned for lots more coming up all season long. It's the defense that is of major concern for the Lakers, since it's ranked 20th in defensive rating, and the biggest reason why their record over the past 20 games is barely over 500. With his 7'2 wingspan, Rui has got the kind of length and defensive energy that could make him effective there. He'll be their most mobile player in the 6'8 to 7' foot category, but when I studied how he fared on switches in the pick and roll, it wasn't too pretty. He's not fast enough to handle NBA guards off the dribble, and it wasn't hard to find evidence of guards of all kinds blowing by him for layups once he switched onto the ball. He's not a shot blocker, and he's not a high volume rebounder, so I suspect Anthony Davis will continue to be the guy they rely on to cover up all the holes in their defense. The issue there is that AD clearly can't make it through a whole season with that kind of pressure on him. LeBron certainly isn't going to give out energy on this end beyond what is barely needed to keep him fresh for offense, and that leaves someone like Thomas Bryant to try and anchor the D. The Lakers did not have to give up much to increase the talent level of their front court significantly, so it was a shrewd move by their front office and will no doubt help them win more games. I think starting Dennis Schroeder alongside Patrick Beverly is a problematic backcourt for many reasons, so I expect another deal to shore up their backcourt. But until then, expect to see a little uptick in the Lakers' winning percentage. <laughs>